Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the podcast. I'm Brendan Lee. I'm here with John. We're going to get going. Hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, yeah. For funsies, I've, I've been toying with the idea of making a... I'm going to address this whole cult leader thing just for fun. We can start Oh, there. yeah. Yeah. Because every so often people ask, or, or no, they don't ask, but I know for a fact it's in the background of people's minds. Like when, a, when say, a guy will sign up here, he's got a wife or a girlfriend, they're always thinking, like, is it a cult? Is it a cult? Well, like, they don't say it. They're thinking it. In, in your own experience, just from your personal experience, I mean, what does it take to to run a cult successfully? Right. Like how how do you do that? Here's here's well before we before I go go that way, here are here are the rules for the cult that I'm running. Okay. Mm -hmm. First rule of this cult is don't believe me. Don't believe what we say. Don't believe anything. First rule: don't believe me or Peter or anybody else. Yeah. Second rule. You come here to do a workshop. When it's done, you go home. Why? I don't want you here. <laughs> <laughs> get the out third, of here. Yeah, see, <laughs> see how many people there are here? There's a whole army of people here. And this is where we do the workshops, right here. Third rule is <clears throat> we don't tell you how to live. When you leave here, it's your life. I don't give a fuck what you do. Go ahead. Just don't yeah. hurt me. <laughs> you know? So, based on those rules, those are the rules of my cult. You tell me. I've been, I've been hashing this out with a few different people. <laughs> yeah. I, I, uh, I was, I was playing, thinking of playing devil's advocate and blah, blah, blah. But I just, actually, I want to go in and just say, like, it just, you're not a, like, no. There's no fucking way. You're not a cult. Um, cults, uh, cults isolate people. Yeah. Cults isolate people from other people. And you do not do that. Cults, cults, yeah, that's just yeah. not a thing. I and they, isolate they... myself from other people. <laughs> 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 you guys are the cult. I want out. <laughs> I'm yeah. out. <laughs> And and cults also teach you to see the world in a specific way, where you 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 know, it's an us versus them, yeah, kind of thing, you know. And that can get that can be like, like, actually, there's like healthier versions of that, and then there's super toxic versions of that, but they create that kind of thing, and um, that ain't that ain't uh, your shtick, yeah. So. Yeah, as you can see, there's so many people here. But you do put people on a mat, and they sit on pillows, true. and you t tell them what to do. That's true. And it's really, really outside the box and yep. unusual stuff that most people have never even heard of, let alone done. Yeah, this is yeah. true. And I think, and I, and I just wonder where that thinking even comes from. I guess like. Well, because people do that, probably the location, middle of nowhere, Texas. You do what again? Nobody's heard about it because of that. Then it means that we somehow control people. You got Buddhas sitting around mm. on the lawn. Yep, we do have Buddhas. Yeah, and you know, oh, everybody. Oh, then they go maybe religion. They put, think religion. Yeah, well, it's it's a Ching Shin. It's it's like an Asian thing. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, there's, I mean, there's cultural stuff attached. And then for the people who aren't from Texas, they think of like Waco and yeah, <laughs> like scary Kool-Aid drinking people and, yep. you know, it's just associations and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Waco's like way north of here, like five hours or more. And there was some yeah, crazy was... craziness that went on there way back with uh, yeah. a lot of people dying terribly yeah yeah crazy stuff yeah it's so weird so yeah i wanted to dispel that and or you know mainly 
this this video and I may clip it out is mainly for if people are wanting to do a workshop and your significant other is freaking the fuck out. It's like you can show them this and be like, hey, you can relax. It's all right. The, the only thing that I think where people get a little weird, maybe is like during the workshop, sometimes we say, turn off your electronic devices. Why do we do that? Because it's a distraction. And then mm. what do we do at the end of the workshop? You turn it back on. If there's an emergency, somebody can contact me. It's like, it's not hard. I, I got a caveat. Yeah, what's that? If you go do a workshop at Changshin, don't expect people outside of Changshin to act like they've done some Changshin. Don't expect other people to have had the same experiences that you've had. Like if you do work, if you do a workshop on uncovering the nature of, of self and mind, other people aren't necessarily going to have that same kind of insight, whatever you learned there. You mean and, on an individual basis? Yeah. On an like, individual basis. And also oh, sure. like, don't, don't try to communicate pe with people like you're in a dyad. Like I, I, I listened to a guy once describe to me how he was at an airport and he was giving a woman the same kind of like, uh, uh, he was waiting for her to do something. She was, she was taking care of something logistical and he was staring at her the same way a listening partner would with like no reaction <laughs> for a prolonged period of time. And it's like, yeah, in a regular social environment, that's not normal. Don't do it. Like yeah. the yeah, exercises that yeah. you do in Cheng Shen are not teaching you how to be social in the normal world. Nor how to be in life. Like, like I said, rule number three, we don't tell you how to live. If you yeah. want to do weird social shit, that's on you. Yeah, that was him. That wasn't yeah. you telling him to do that. He was just yeah. doing it. And then he told me about his results. And and not surprisingly, she was uncomfortable. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> <laughs> and we, yeah, we actively tell people that. Like when they leave a contemplation intensive, we'll tell them like, when you go out into the world, take it easy, okay? You, you don't have a listening partner. People are not going to pay attention the same way, nor should you, nor should they. Right. It's like, you know, yeah. yeah. So it's Cause it is intense. What you do is really intense. Yeah. And I think that intensity, you know, are some cults in intense. Yeah. That's why they're cults, you know? So there is intensity, but, but, uh, the, the whole spirit of the thing is like, no, that's, that's not what it is. Yeah. It's literally the opposite of that. Yeah. Something like that. My, the, this, this lady that I'm seeing, recently she's like you're not doing a very good job at being a cult we need to <laughs> that's what i'm saying <laughs> we need dude to... if you're gonna oh my be God. a cult you gotta change a few things you gotta get with the program here because you suck at being a cult leader <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah what is the ideal cult <laughs> the ideal cult it's let's see an ideal cult is one that succeeds probably christianity mm. they've got that shit sewn the fuck up um you tell people how to live you control them you have a, a complex structures that can last thousands of years that live past the death of the founder a solid belief system that keeps people craving more and just constantly craving a future that doesn't ever happen, right? That then drives them to keep going until they die. And the next people are brought up in that. So you're going to have to control probably how they, how they grow up, who they marry, who they have, like how they have kids. Cause you got to keep it going for thousands of years. And then it's got to be isolated from the rest of humanity in a certain sense, because that the thinking has to propagate. But probably the best one would be, well, I don't know. One that works forever. Yeah. It's gotta be, gotta be something that's, it, it depends on what's, what's, well, what's your ideal cult. Is it one, one where it lasts a long time? Is it one that creates an effect on people? Like the word cult and culture. Yeah, I think about that. Cult. Sure. 
Yeah. It's just one is broadly shared and the other one is like niche or something like that. But I, yeah. I think it revolves, usually revolves around a personality. And, and then we think of it like, like the, the, the normal way of thinking of a cult is what you go in, you get isolated, you get brainwashed, which is to say people are telling you how to think, what to believe and how to live. You cut yourself off from others. And then, and then what? I they think control uh, you and you do everything you do is for the cult. It's not for you. Is that, is that what a cult is? Is that how that, is that how that goes? Is that how it goes? I don't know. I'm no expert, but I can, I can say that some cults and cultures are more controlling and, um, and uh, it seems like oppressive. Some are more functional and longer lasting. Some are more violent, you know, yeah. some are more open to outsiders, some less so. Yeah. And I, and I would, I would say that we're all in a cult. We're yeah, all we... in a culture and we're all drinking the Kool-Aid at least like some of the time. Yeah. So here's a, here's a cult uh, definition. A system of religious veneration and devotion directed toward a particular figure or object, the mm. cult of St. Olaf, or a relatively small group of people having religious beliefs or practices regarded by others as strange or sinister, a network mm. of Satan worshiping cults, strange or sinister. We got strange, but unusual religious, i would say yeah, unusual yeah very unusual uh religious beliefs or practices there ain't no religion here and if you bring it here no or if you bring it here go ahead but we don't do religion like all religion if people start believing in cheng shin we tell them to stop it if people start believing in like what I say, I didn't know. They start believing in the book of not knowing. No. Yeah. All right. Anyway, we handle that. <laughs> we handle Think that so. for you people out there. Come try to <laughs> come try to join the cult. They'll be like, we're not on workshop time. Get out of here. <laughs> Go away. <laughs> yeah. Bye. Uh, I don't know. So anyway, today I wanted to talk about um, relationships, and we started to get in it, in it a little bit before we started recording. Um, wanted to talk about ideal relationships, and I was just because again, I was talking. I'm talking to this this lady, and uh, she was saying, "What were you saying? Oh, 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 oh!" Like people ask me what I do. And I'm like, ah, oh, fuck, here we go. Try to tell them what I do. All right. And then I da, 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 do martial arts. I teach people. I run workshops. I run a retreat center. And I teach people about their bodies and martial arts. And I also do stuff called consciousness work, which is like meditation on steroids. That's usually where I start. And then, and then she was talking about, well, wait a minute. You, you, you do all this consciousness work, something paraphrasing like this. You do all this consciousness work, but you, you have a hard time with relationships. Like, what's the deal? So I'm like, yeah, don't confuse the consciousness work with the foibles of the individual. And people have all kinds of crap about teachers and, and then ideal relationships. So I thought ideal, we could talk about ideals and then ideal relationships or ideal partnerships, you see. And the, I was talking to her thinking about, well, have you ever seen a perfect relationship ever? with anybody ever like what is a perfect relationship and in this case what i mean by relationship is we're talking specifically about intimate partnerships which i am not i'm not a i'm not an expert if you look at my track record <laughs> you see yeah and then i was thinking 
look at anybody's track record. Like, what the fuck do you find there? Is there what is what's the perfect one? You get you get at sixteen, you find your true love, and then what? You live with them forever and then die. That's the perfect. Like, what? Where is this ideal partnership? Um. So yeah, we'll start there. I just don't. So what what is the purpose of the relationship? I think that's the that's the thing is what is the purpose of the relationship and uh if that's not really established then we can't really judge what an ideal relationship is. Yeah, and I think I think you brought up that I think that's part of the in this case the problem or maybe we don't need to make it a problem but what seems what seems to occur is people don't even know to consider the purpose for their own relating they go off of an idea that they have that if queried about said idea probably would have no idea what the fuck or where they even got it do you get what i'm uh what i mean but do you get what i mean do you get what i mean uh can you say it again yeah it's it's like here's what i'm thinking right now it's like when i if i go looking for an ideal relationship I look for a feeling that I get like, oh my God, they're the one, right? Mm -hmm. But this whole, there's a, it seems that there's a lot to unpack because this whole idea that there is a one, you say, well, how do you know they're the one? Well, I feel it. Yeah, but why do you have those feelings? Like, what are those about? It's like, well, I find the person, I have a certain feeling of stimulation, and then I, I assume in the background, but you probably wouldn't even say, think to say that this was an assumption, that they're going to fix me. Or, oh my God, if I get in a, in a relationship, somehow I'll be whole and complete. And I think a lot of people, when they're looking for said ideal, they're not, they don't consider the functionality. They just have some idea that the person that they're with is going to fix them or resolve them, or somehow they'll just be better without even knowing why that's I, I believe that's one aspect and then thinking about what you said earlier which i thought was thought was thought provoking for me in this conversation is there's a biological aspect too that runs us like why do i want to go stick my penis in a vagina what's that even for wow i just got deja vu or not deja vu. i think i said this i think i said this in another podcast <laughs> what a thing to say no, the, lady, the lady i'm seeing like, like i was doing some video editing and i stuck the earbud in her ear right when i said right when i'm gonna stick a penis in a vagina and she's like <laughs> okay thanks for <laughs> but she's cool with it she's good with it like um you see so i want to acknowledge and pay homage to the biological yes we there's a strong drive to want to fuck now, some people do, do not want to fuck bodies that procreate, like gay men and gay women. They're not going to make babies, but they still want to get off and they still want to fuck. So there is this biological, <clears throat> I want to slap my meat with your meat kind of thing. And then, but then aside, <laughs> and then, you know. And aside from the aside, <laughs> putting it delicately, you know, <laughs> I am incredibly delicate, very nuanced and not blunt. No, no. And aside from the biological, which is extremely strong, there's all this other shit like, oh, you'll fix me. You're the ideal partner. You're the one. You're the romantic love. You see, and I hear tell even romance is a new idea. Yeah, these things just sound superficial to me. They just sound like stuff on top or stuff dealing with trauma and, and like besides be the, the point and after shit. the fact. And then, and it's the least important shit. That's what it seems to me like in people's minds it is the most that's that's how that's their defining characteristic I think of what how they choose their partners. From what Maybe I've in seen in high school and For, if they have prolonged adolescence. So now now do you do you okay say more this sounds i mean like what, what you're talking about to... what, what you're talking about seems like very accurate as as what people do when they are um basically they're they're, they're not grown up they're not grown up they're childish they've they've got 
mommy and daddy issues, which, you know, nothing wrong with having mommy and daddy issues. Everybody pretty much is going to have mommy and daddy issues. From a standpoint, especially, doesn't, like, good and bad, irrelevant. Yeah, you got mommy well, issues, okay. You have a, but you're you're working them out with with uh, with another human being. That's what and, seems to be the case, yeah. And Most it's, people. and yeah, like, looking for a feeling and, and so forth. And that's, uh, like, falling in love and uh, all this and that. But, uh, that's that's uh that's really like that is child's play. Yeah. That is not having now, an adult relationship. Now does child mean cuz right away child's play I'm like okay I'm almost 40 and other people child does not mean like the body can age to 50 but they can still be a child. Yeah. So you're saying but, like, by definition that way of selecting a partner an intimate partner is child's play. That, that was sort of a question slash statement on my part. Sounds like that's what you're saying. I tend to I agree don't, with you. I, I don't know for sure because I think that – I don't know. So just straight up caveat, I don't know. But seems to me that it is really important to have um, shared values and right. – uh and and the ability to communicate and genuine real appreciation from one to the other on a variety of levels so it sounds a quick quick sidebar it sounds now that you are it sounds like holy smokes I'm trying to talk it sounds like to me now you're saying you're describing a qualities of a relationship that seem to work Correct. Yeah. And functionality. Functional and, and powerful and good. Yeah, because vibing. because those other things those other things that you're talking about, they may not have anything to do with the functionality of the relationship. Mm -hmm. And they might I, be what got you into the relationship, but they sure as hell won't keep you in it. Yeah. I can tell you that from a personal experience <laughs> standpoint. <laughs> yeah, that stuff doesn't work. That other stuff that that Oh, you're going to resolve me at some point, you'll realize, or I'll realize that it won't, they won't resolve me. And then usually it falls apart. And, and I guess talking to my married friends at some point, it, it's like, there's a day to day for anything to last a long time like that you get past what they call the honeymoon stage where it's like, Oh, all flowers and nice. And, and then it's like, then there's life. And what does life have, have to offer? Mm, laundry, dishes, taking shits, cooking food, putting money on the table, roof over your head, surviving. If you're entrepreneurial or whatever, build that business, build an empire, do whatever. It's like the life stuff, the mundane shit that you go through day to day, the ups and the downs, the arguments, the fights, the good, the bad, crisis, like medical shit. Mm. That's the reality, right? Things change. And then you know. so, so then we're considering it seems like a, a relationship if we're talking about ideal relationship in this case i think we've switched from an ideal like a romantic ideal to just leaving the world of ideals and hey what works i think yeah, yeah that's yeah and like i think there are principles that allow for workability shared values like principles and dynamics that work and then and and by and what I'm also defining work as it's loving and yes nice a partnership that is yeah. two people working together how many relationships do you see intimate partnerships excuse me relationship could be as simple as relating one thing to another so when i say relationship that's what i'm thinking it's like i could relate a thought to my perceptions i can relate you or associate you with, a, with something else and that's a relationship we could box and that's a relationship or we could i could relate to a car uh, that's relating um, and we're specifically talking about intimate partnerships and trying for long lasting and successful intimate partnerships 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. Shared values. <clears throat> Essential. Share, shared values. Love. Love. And, and when I say, when I say, love, yeah. yeah, like, like I'm in a relationship right now. It's definitely, it has not been very long. Yeah. But I can characterize it by it being the most um, gentle and honest and patient and uh yeah, like like uh, kind like um like really really t um being emotionally uh sensitive one to the other is really really important for me i find yeah and for my partner and that um that was lacking in in my previous relationships or i was not aware I, I i don't think i was aware of the importance of 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 gentleness and patience and kindness like how important that is for me both to mm. experience it and to give it it's but it's important for me right because because i'm i'm this is like someone that i'm being vulnerable with and it's very intimate. And if I cannot be safe, like, to, like you want to talk about safe spaces, that's a place for a safe space. Yeah. Like lots of honesty needs to be balanced with lots of care. Hmm. Because there's going to be some brutal truths that get revealed. And if you can't be holding somebody non-judgmentally, and no. and not only non-judgmentally, but like it's not only that I don't judge you, but I care. You yeah. know, um, that kind of thing is a uh, really important. I think as like sort of the quality, and I th I I think now it's fairly it's relatively easy to do that. But yeah, as the honeymoon phase, uh, you know dissipates with time and with age i think it's the shared values and shared um compatibility yeah like i've been with people that are are way too um yang so to speak like i'm a pretty yang guy if we're doing the yin yang thing and um that doesn't work for me because it's too it's just so like we, we just fight all the time <laughs> like, right so you know? yeah it seems like a base level of compatibility is useful and then as you were talking i was also considering there's like what are what are some of the other things that partnerships have to go through you also have to go through tough times and face challenges so then there's like mm -hmm. another thing that happens what happens when the shit hits the fan how resolve guys, grit yeah. toughness yeah and what not necessarily what happens when the shit hits the fan between y'all or you two what happens oh. when you versus life the shit hits the fan like how do you deal and that also may be a consideration like do we have a powerful dynamic that can take complex problems that need to be solved real quick and overcome them with intelligence skill and what would that take it seems like communication awareness self-awareness what can i handle versus not what can my partner handle versus not? How do we work together in order to work together? You need to communicate. You need to have some goddamn awareness of what's around you in terms of like, like what's next. Okay. How do I, how do I interact with the world around me to overcome this? And how do we do it together? Like that might be another uh, and team player type stuff, appreciating mm -hmm. each other's strengths and weaknesses. Yeah. Like there's, yeah. it's a, there's a difference between wanting somebody to complete you or complete complete me and yeah. recognizing that I'm just not good at everything. And if I am partnered with someone who is good at things that I'm not good with, good at and vice versa, then together we have more scope. Yeah. It's a partnership. You nitwits like partner work together. Right. 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 Hmm. Ugh. Yeah. I think my sister had this at her wedding, which I thought was a beautiful thing. It was, um, 
you know, usually most people think of, of an intimate partnership as like two people standing together, staring into each other's eyes, rather, rather that instead of that, let's stand side by side facing out into the world. Yeah. At least a lot of the time. Yeah. Right. There's time to stare into each other's oh, yeah, eyes yeah, yeah. too. <laughs> get naked, look at each other, get intimate, fuck, create love. Go. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, most of the time you're not doing that. Yeah. And, um, I was also talking to Peter a little bit, you know, as, as we do, sometimes we go out biking or hang out, you know, we, from time to time interact and we were, we were talking or marveling. I think he was marveling at the, um, yeah, an intimate, intimate relationships. There's so many ups and downs and all the drama. And there is this aspect where, as humans, as far as I can tell, we have needs and the needs may be based on trauma. They may be based on past stuff, just like ways of viewing the world. Like for example, if I think traffic should move quickly and it doesn't, like that's a need in me. And if traffic doesn't move quickly based on my need, I'll experience some kind of anger. And that, we got that stuff. Now, unless you're completely free of what we're calling need, I don't mean need like fucking water, shelter, heat. Those are needs. But I mean, these social, emotional needs, that stuff that's like, uh, it's not resolved or whatever. There's going to be conflict. Yeah. Because you, you're slamming two complex humans together. Like humans are very complex creatures. And so there is that aspect. Like if you're going to be, if I'm going to be in an intimate partnership, all my needs are coming along for the ride and guess whose job it is to fulfill those. <laughs> yeah. Don't do that. <laughs> like that's a silly thing to do. Yeah. It's kind of like, it, I wouldn't it, do that. Come up. And I, and so I think, uh, just, I know I'll let you go as, as I, as I ramble on here is, is, uh, I think an, an appropriate empowered relationship to my own neediness is appropriate. And I think that one relationship that works for that is acknowledging my own needs, my own mm. emotional pain and making it that's mine. Mm. That's not for you. That's mine. And, and being clear about the separation as if between my shit and the others. And I think that does make a difference. Yeah, that's, I think that's the, the heart of the nonviolent communication Right. Uh, is the, is the, 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 the intention to take responsibility for your own emotional experience and your own needs and your ability to communicate about that. Yeah. And it doesn't mean that you abandon your needs and it doesn't mean that you don't want or ask or communicate to your partner that you would like them to help you meeting your needs because yeah. you are in a relationship to get your needs met and they yeah. are too. Yeah. And, and I think some needs are like way off the charts, stupid, like totally wacko weirdness that, that is unresolved and unhealthy. And then I think there's other stuff like, Hey, could I need a hug right now? Or I need, you know, I I'm really tired. I want the floors to get clean. I need you to clean the floor. Can you please do that for me? Like, you know, that seems functional. And then other stuff seems mm. just fucked up. Like, I don't know. Mm. Uh, I don't know why I said that, but keep going. Yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, there's a lot to talk about here. So then, um, oh yeah. But I, I think um, one thing that, that occurred to me uh, just as you were saying that last part about cleaning the floor and stuff is there's, there's nonviolent communication, but there's also nonverbal. Like we, 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 uh, there's like a balance again, talking about functionality and different people are going to be different, but yeah. at, to some degree, you've got to develop some empathy. You have to be able to look at somebody and imagine what they need because people cannot always articulate it perfectly, especially when they're emotionally unresourced. What, what, does, what does that mean? When they're fucking tired and hungry and oh, like they've been like working they're... all day, they might yeah. not be able to 
fully own their feelings and tell you exactly what they're feeling and what they need at that moment. And sometimes like try to feel, you know, empathize, try to sense what it is they need. Like if you, and you can t pay attention to the things like people's body language, pay yeah. attention to their, to their movements. You know, this is going to sound um, perhaps very sexist, but I think of um, like women in some ways, the way I do cats or horses. Like if you want to approach what? a cat. Please explain. Please explain. Please explain. <laughs> if you want to approach a cat to pet it, you have to pay attention to its body language. Oh, you if can, you want to yeah. ride a horse, you have to pay attention to its body language. You have to pay attention to your body language and tone of voice and, you know, speed of movement. And all of these things matter. Yeah. All the time. Yeah, if you want to relate to them effectively, for sure. Yeah. So, and I, yeah. as you were as you were talking about that, I was thinking about, say, boxing, for example. I am paying very close attention to what they need and what they want. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's very and, uh, much like that. Yeah, just but, just uh, take out the antagonism and put it in the put it in the other direction. Put it in a partnership, and then also add a whole bunch of social, which is like social nuance. Because boxing is very not social. It's like, no, I'm going to break your face, but I'm still paying attention to what you want, what you think, how you move, what you need, how you feel. I'm feeling you very mm -hmm. much. Like that's all that attention just going outward. So, it, so as, as we're talking, I'm noticing that there are perhaps some principles that we could distill our conversations down to some of the things I've noticed so far and also in my out my many 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 hours of work and consideration and stuff like that and consciousness and all that stuff come to a workshop by the way <laughs> is um communication is essential we're talking about intimate partnerships and being functional and in loving and enlivening communication i think is essential which is some experience gets from here over to there yeah not not let me do a, a thing to get you to do something, not let me say something so you feel a certain way, so I feel a certain way. No, I get something across. Hey, I'm having a bad day. It's like, oh, I get it. Wow, you feel really bad right now. I got it. That's communication like, or whatever. Or I'm having a feeling or I'm having a desire. Communication. Seems like some lovingness is useful. Values that are shared at least certain core values that are shared is essential. And then I also think of principles like balance, because there does seem to need to be a balance between work, play, love, mundane shit. Like you can't just be having sex all the time. It just doesn't work. There needs to be a balance between this, these different aspects in order for things to maintain. Yeah, well, that's why the honeymoon doesn't last forever. Yeah, you can't honeymoon the whole time. And even and even if you did, like say we won the lottery or something like that, and then we put all the money. First, we didn't tell anybody because we're not stupid. And then we put all the money <laughs> in the mutual funds. So now we've got all the money, all the things, all the house. Now what are you going to do? Are you just going to debauch the whole time? Let's just do cocaine and fuck. How long are you going to be able to do that? You got to eat sometime. Right. Uh, but then, but then you got to cook, but then you got to clean, or is it just going to turn into like this? Yeah, that's, mm. it's not sustainable. Um, so we've got shared values, we've got communication, we've got honesty. Why? Well, because if you want something real with somebody, if you want to show up real, you have to be real. And if you're going to say real, you have to speak what's real and what's that was, what's, what's true. What do you do for that? Like, how do you do that? Honesty. Otherwise, you're not relating to anything real. You're relating to a lie, and there's consequences to relating to a lie. You'll have a superficial relationship that has no depth. It's going to be based on falsehood. And I think principles like commitment, help, and clarity, in the sense that commitment is what gets us through the hard times, no matter what. It's like, I'm yeah. going to be with you. Is it going to be easy all the time? No. Well, how do we keep going when the shit hits the fan? 
you stay committed. Yeah. And there's probably other principles that allow for excitement. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I think of all the complaints that I hear, I've got, I've got some friends, you know, married friends, whatever. And I, I hear the, the complaints from one to the other and they kind of go both ways. But one, one is like, well, if he would just, you know, I, I think women have this one. Okay. I'm generalizing here. So please f- forgive me for generalizing. Oh, people of the world. He needs to surprise me. So I think there's a principle to surprise. And, yeah. and like if men would just pay the fuck attention, which we're terrible at, and notice that your your woman likely, and again, generalizing, is dropping hints that she doesn't see as hints. She sees as like, here's what I fucking want. But we have to kind of read between the lines. If you just yeah. listen to what the fuck she says, and then every so often just do something that surprises her that will make a difference and it's yeah. got to be consistent over time you can't just do it at the fucking beginning you have to keep mm. doing it forever all right it's like every so often a little surprise a little this a little that and think about her that'll make a difference and then some other shit that i've heard and we're a little bit off topic here i think or or we're we're circling around there's all this other complexity i think Another thing I've heard is like um, from the male side, women tend to expect the dude to know what the fuck they want. Like, oh, like I'm supposed to read your goddamn mind? No, I think that's where women need to stretch a little bit. It's like, no, you need to tell your man what you want. You need to tell him in no simple terms. You need to tell him to his face what to do. Buy me mm. some goddamn flowers, you idiot. Oh, <laughs> yeah, and no. keep buying me. Right, you see, like, that's a... Uh. See, that's that's why I go back. That's that's where I, I say no, no. Like, I, I, I kind of want to speak to um, uh, How dare myself you disagree and, with me? and oh you. Have, well, because I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a believer. Um, In... <laughs> whatever it is we're doing here, Chinkshin. <laughs> <laughs> this is not Shenzhen. This is like there's like a, lots of opinion. But yeah, yeah, we went off into opinion land. I just but, these are these are a couple of gripes I have. Right. So I think yeah, you're right. I think I got off track there. But I I nah. think it for me for me. Yeah. So the the dog uh, the dogs <laughs> the horses and cats analogy. Let's let's stay away from dogs. Okay. The the horses and cats analogy is is really useful. Um and, so and, and what you yeah, it sounds like empathy and sensitivity. You're being yes. sensitive to the other. So like I don't expect a horse or a cat to tell me what it wants. I expect it to communicate that through nonverbal means. You see, I think that's a step that's like 20 steps too far for most men. And and I'm suggesting that that's they want to go as far as they can in that direction. Like now, where did you learn that? From from horrible pain and suffering. But where did you learn that? From my own personal pain and suffering. But how? With 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 women folk. But but how did you even get that idea in the first place? With living life, I don't know. Dancing is part of it. See, okay, okay, right, right, right. Because, um, uh, but it's not just dancing. But yeah, da- dancing is a good example. So, like, helped. dancing is a good example because, like, in partner dancing, you can tell a woman how to follow you, but it's never gonna be like you have to follow her to get her to follow you. Yeah, like you have to lead her, and you have to follow her to lead her. It's Saint Ching Shen too. And it's like that all the time. And yes, there are times when you step out into the into the purely cognitive, let's talk about the nuts and bolts of things in sort of a like with men, mm. with 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 men, like the the that part is like really simple. Like we can communicate on a very like rational, logical basis, and it's there all the time. It's re- like that's the default. 
Yeah. And then and then the like the 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 somatic intimate connected part that's like the specific activity oriented stuff like boxing. Right. With women in my experience with especially a partnership with it's literally the opposite. Yeah. It's literally the opposite. And that's why all I was saying like all the time. Go all feelings all the time. Yeah. Think of it as when you're with a woman when you're having anything to do with a woman, you are dancing with her. But how did you learn that the first time? Where did you develop that? I think you discovered something because you didn't have this as a kid. Like kid, kid. When the fuck did that happen? I don't know. I don't think it was this. I, I know. I know that. Um. So one thing, like you know, I've been in, a, I've, I have been in an extraordinarily toxic relationship. Yeah, you've experienced that. I've yeah. experienced that, and so partly out of survival, I found that was the only thing yeah. that could keep me from getting into some really like so painful situations. Okay, I see. So you're, you're, you're. There was some something about survival went way up from that. But how yeah. did you find out? Like, for example, I, I tell this story sometimes. I've said it in some other videos where I, I talk about um, women. And I'm like, I know what it's like to be a woman. And they're like, oh, really? Do tell. And I, I'm like, OK. Fair <laughs> <laughs> but um, I was at this this. Um, uh dance event uh, or this event this outdoor music event in houston and i uh, there was a woman there and i made out with another woman while she was there and she got upset and at the time she was really upset and i really poured myself into listening to her and i said wait a minute okay i realized i was reacting i was feeling hurt i was feeling scared whatever I shoved all that to the side. I'm like, okay, Brendan, let's try this other thing. And I'm like, boom, no, I'm going to listen to you. Mm. And I really like put myself over there and then something clicked. And suddenly I could feel everything. Everything yep. was a feeling. The people around me were a feeling. What they were thinking was a feeling. What she was doing was a feeling. What she was thinking was a feeling. Everything was a felt. It was like, oh my God. And it was all smushed together like a fucking, what the fuck? And blew my mind. I was like, holy shit. That is so different. And I shut it down as quickly as I could. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, no wonder y'all go crazy. It's all mixed up. It's all together. It's like this massive feeling that's incredibly complex. And from that, I was like, oh, that has changed the way I relate to women forever. That one, boom. Okay. Yeah. And I don't so remember I'm you just, telling me that. Yeah. And, and I, so I at least have some insight and I, it seems to bear out when I share this with women, they're like, yeah, yeah, it's like that. Now, if you're a woman out there listening and it's not at all like that, I please tell me so I can shut the fuck and up. And leave it in the comments. Yeah. Leave it in the comments <laughs> and talk in the comments a lot. <laughs> but yeah. so I'm wondering, so I keep hammering because I hear you with a certain perspective that I do not see other men. They'd probably be boys, you know, this would be more like, hey, be a man, pay attention to your partner, be sensitive. Yeah, but that's not manly. Shut the fuck up or whatever. Okay, that's me opinionating. Where did you discover that? I don't know, man. Can you remember the time before that? No, I, I really don't think, uh, well, okay, can I remember or, a time or, before that? I yeah. really feel like it's been a gradual thing and it's something that I'm continuing to learn. Yeah, it's like you started it's not somewhere. Like, sure, and maybe um, it was a few different little realizations, or I'm just sensing the possibility of some, you know, maybe at some point you got oh, be sensitive. yeah, okay, okay, yes. Yeah. So, so probably like, so I used to do work with like, you know, the kind of work that I did, the inner subjective meditation, nonviolent communication and um, uh, circling and that kind of thing. Yeah. And, and I think in doing that work, that helped me 
yeah articulate that yes yes definitely doing that kind of work there you go helped a lot doing that kind yeah. of work with with that doing that kind of work in dance um and it's and it's not describe, only i'm sorry can you describe intersubjective like what the in layman terms what that means yeah intersubjective so it's kind of what i was just about to say it's just oh. i never use these these like i don't i don't i don't talk about those kind of things anymore i just i just live normal life like i don't i'm not involved in any i'm not in a cult <laughs> right? i don't i don't do any weird shit um and um uh but uh yeah intersubjective meaning so like you have a subjective experience right Inter now means all... between right yes and i have okay. a subjective experience Got it. and my meditation is meditation means my attention right sure. i just i'm, I'm limiting case. my attention to my subjective experience and your subjective experience right and the, goes, the that would be circling right there yeah it's like, like your experience of what's my experience of your experience of my experience of your experience it's good forever yeah. and ever right yeah and that i think that that's a really important aspect it's not just listening to this this woman as if she's like uh like what i was saying like she's a cat or a horse or something and it's also you're paying attention to yourself like you're a cat or a horse yeah like feel and listen feel everything like try to feel your own physical being which includes the emotional as much as hers and the space around you yeah. like be be a natural being be a be an uncivilized being in the rainforest with your woman and it's two primates without all this thinky stuff and right. just get very very pre that's what it is right mm -hmm. and we don't do that as men very much because we're really interested in concepts and ideas yeah, and or mechanical stuff. I was mechanical driving, driving shit. out of Home Depot watching two dudes look at like there's this dude parked with his truck and a trailer and another dude parked on the other side with his truck and they're both there looking at the truck and the trailer like pointing at shit. I'm like, yep. Yeah. I bet we love see that. We, like, We're, yeah, yeah, they're fucking in and, it. And, right. and, and sure, lots of women love that stuff too, but let's be real. Generally that's something speaking, that generally speaking – more guys just kind of go into that mode oh, yeah. and Fucking maybe it. it's cultural. I don't know, but we're just like, we don't develop this, um, this other capacity yeah, as much, but you can, and it's just you, it's just your physical body and her physical body. And emotional too. Like it's like physical, yeah. but it's not just the physicality. I think what you're talking about and describing is also the feeling component, all the feelings. I think, I think that's important for this, like intimate partnership stuff. Mm -hmm. And I had another thought about that, this, cause you're paying attention. Yeah, I can't remember. It's like paying attention to that stuff. Then you, oh, oh, there was a principle in there. There's something. Presence. List, list, presence. Yeah. Something present, it seems useful. And, um, listening yeah which listening is feeling needed needed for communication of course but then being able to listen which is to say to get the experience of another like oh your experience got it like paying attention like that so, so, something something else comes up for me too um the presence is foundational because if we're not present, we're just conceptual. We're just we're just playing games, like yeah. conceptual games. And, and when I we're think present that helps to create intimacy. It is it is it's the, it's, the, it's the way. Like if you want to get present, if you want for guys that are courting a woman who are interested or just flirting with a woman, it's all about noticing things in the moment that are actually happening right now. Yeah. And voicing them. Because we're talking We're about stuff that's danger. abstract. I bet men are danger. danger. Not talking about no. That's what you if you want to develop yeah. that intimacy. Do but that. But if I but if I say something Share. like to to like even to you right now, 
you know, like that your eyes just lit up, you right. know, that immediately has an effect on you right. just because it's here and now. Right. Right. So we start voicing things that are actually present to, and after now we're going to get present to a lot and some of it's going to be stuff that we love naturally. And some of it's going to be like, eh, like maybe she's got a mole. Yeah. Maybe, 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 maybe she just, I've got some ear hair. Yeah. Like maybe something. Place. Yeah. Right. There's, a, there's all kinds of things you might get present to that you yeah. might not appreciate. And somehow in that the next step is to, get into your experience so deeply that you can appreciate it. And I know you've done this. You've, you've turned things that you weren't into into things that you were into. You, you've appreciated things that suck. Yeah. You've actually gotten enjoyment and satisfaction out of things that you're like, oh, that's really hard or that's really difficult, whatever it is, right? Yeah. Yeah. This is a possible, this is possible. And guaranteed in a relationship with another human being, there's going to be, I don't care if she's the most beautiful woman in the world. There's going to be a fucking like, she's you know, gonna... just there's going to be a million things that you're like not into. Yeah. And there's got to be a, a, you know, I mean, every, every, what's everybody's the best way to get an ugly that? side. See, but like what, what's the most effective empowered, like, what what works for that because that is going to be a thing appreciation i'm no i'm no guru on appreciation but <laughs> but it's it's about appreciation I'm no fucking guru <laughs> it's it's about appreciation it's like like can you enjoy love laugh at get into like if it's something fucked up and disgusting like you've got to get into how fucking fucked up and disgusting it is you've got to enjoy your suffering yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta get, yeah, yeah. If you want you to get, enjoy it, that's how you do that. You enjoy it. Well, if you were talking about having a functional relationship for right. that's going to last longer than two seconds or whatever short amount of time, yeah. then then developing and honing your ability to appreciate different qualities and textures and everything is so important. And I think that's an aspect that a lot of us just miss and neglect because it's super easy to not notice because we just like what we don't what we like and we don't like what we don't like yeah. and we just fucking leave it at that yeah but if you're ever stuck in a situation where it's just a pretty sit shitty situation you've got to learn to like things that you don't like yeah i think of goggins right away he says embrace the suck and of course yeah. he, he comes at it from a certain <laughs> harsh standpoint that or very what i would consider harsh but i i appreciate it i kind of like it i'm anyway i'm just sharing for, for everybody else like yeah or um jocko willink same sort of yeah deal. but yes then like oh but they're men and they're military i can't think of any female examples where it's like that i know my god i mean talk to like 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 talk to a mother there you go about about her babies because yeah. taking care of babies sucks Piss, shit puke constant attention no sleep yeah blah, and they blah, have to blah, learn blah, to love they've it. i mean it happens naturally but they've also got to work at it they've got to love those little fuckers yeah and i've and... talked to more than one like yeah there's times where i want to murder my fucking kid and they mm -hmm. have to keep going yeah there you go and 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 i think that this is again going to sound pretty sexist but i think that in general the onus is on us as men hmm. to to be we, we have to get that ball rolling like what ball the the appreciation ball like it's wonderful like you want your women to be able to reciprocate it is very important that she can reciprocate but when she can't, you be the one. Just take it on you to dig deep and to look for the things to love. Because hmm. she's going to be the one who's doing it first and foremost for your little kids. Oh, okay. We're t yeah, we're talking. Because I, I think, I think it generally speaking, it goes man to woman, woman to child. And again, I, you can call me super traditional or sexist or whatever, but 
I think that's just kind of biologically how we're how we're made. And and um, it's not always it's not always like that, but there's just a dynamic. It tends to go that way. So like, don't expect your woman to communicate everything per perfectly, or or to be as logical and straightforward with you as yeah. a guy talking about his car. Yeah, and I've even <laughs> I've even talked to like uh, I remember having a conversation where I'm like, well, what do you feel? And like, I don't know what I feel. And I'm I don't like, know what I feel. How the fuck do you not know what you feel? How is this? But, but then I was like, oh, wait, no, it could be all schmush. Like, it's complex in there. So they don't. Yeah. It's like hard to and, and, and because you only experience, like and I only experience one or two yeah, feelings like one, at a time. One thing at a time. <laughs> <laughs> one. Anger. Okay. Lunch. <laughs> anger. Then lunch. Then yeah, and that's that. That's another thing too. So you just said anger, and this is like, ouch. Right. Um, there's a there's a cultural, um. You know, I'm I'm all for being a manly man, and I'm and I and I um even though I'm not one, and I <laughs> and I respect um people like Jocko Willink because how can you not? Yeah. Right. At the same time, there is a. You know, my grandfather, the only the only emotions that he could express were anger. Right. Was now, probably anger. Probably that's a cultural thing. That's know. a cultural thing. It's not it, sadness is weak. Vulnerability is weak. Like, and if you I can't express and even happiness can be weak, like you can't even be too excited. Right. Right. And um, and I think that uh, that's like I'm not a, a fan of a lot of woke terminology but that is a kind of toxic masculinity so to speak it's it's a stunted masculinity because your emotions all of them are masculine because you are a man so i i kind of reject this idea that you have a feminine side you don't you're a dude you're a man you have nothing but masculine sides and guess what men have emotions yeah. What's 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 not masculine is simply not being responsible for your emotions. And that's a big dip. I mean, you know this, I think, at least as well as I do. It's like you have lots of emotions. Oh, yeah. And, and, extremely and, be, powerful be, ones too, so. and they're extremely powerful. Yeah. Being able to feel them and relate to them. And sometimes that means acting on them. And sometimes it means, you know, going into them. Sometimes it means getting at what is driving them and dropping them completely. Yeah. You know, but it never is like, I don't have them. Oh, yeah, no. (laughs) Yeah. It it, it doesn't work. Bullshit. It doesn't work. Yeah, it doesn't. Because we are. Yeah, we're emotional. Yeah. Yeah. We're emotionally driven as humans. Like we run on emotions. And I don't care if people. Oh, man, doesn't run on emotions. No, he does everybody yeah. does it's not it's genderless yeah um, it's genderless next next idea so now that we've talked about all that stuff what do you think so we've ex- we i think we've we've all over the place to recap we've gone all over the place as far as i can tell and we've described what to the best of our knowledge and correct me if i'm wrong are some stuff that we think works for an intimate partnership. I've gone into some principles that I think really make a difference and that are just broad spectrum. If you have these things going on with you and with your intimate partner, it will work. What stands in the way? How come? Because here's one trap right away is making what we've said, that's the right way to do a relationship. We didn't say right or wrong. At least I didn't say right or wrong. I'm saying that in order for an intimate partnership to be functional and loving and healthy and empowering for the people, it these are things that work. Like if you have a car without an engine, it does not drive. If you have a car with an engine but with no wheels, it doesn't run well. We're talking about something that runs well. Now, the first trap is <laughs> good analogy an at ideal. the moment. <laughs> you make it an ideal. Oh, that's how it should be. No, 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 no. 
I'm saying that's what'll make it work and function. Now, how come we don't see that more? What gets in the way? I know for me, do I do all those things? Do I align with those principles that make a difference? <laughs> Why not? Mm. You ever seen anybody that does? Why not? Something else is at play. There's another factor or many factors. What the fuck's up with that? Hmm. Maybe we're expecting things that aren't there and we're believing in Santa Claus and we're also um not we're 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 uh underestimating the the time and the consistency that it takes to develop a real relationship. Yeah, well, why do we go, we start with this stuff, we could even from our standpoint, right, I, th I think I'm starting to see maybe something. From our standpoint, it's easy to consider these things when we're not in conflict. <laughs> mm. And then, but then when we have a conflict or a problem, something else happens. Is it communication? Nope. Is it loving? Nope. Is it like you ever, you're with your, your partner and then they do something, then you hurt their feelings intentionally just to make them hurt. Why? You get angry at them. What's anger designed to do? That's designed to destroy. Why? See? Yeah. To just like, why, do, for why me, all the other stuff? What are we doing? For me now, like that is just, that is the beginning. That is, No. Or, 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 right, you're in the perfect relationship. Like, oh my God, they're so perfect. And then you sabotage it. Not you, but mm. you ever, like some people, they self-sabotage. Like he's, or, or, or I've been in a relationship, I think, like with a woman. And I can tell, I'm like, man, I am really great for this person. I would be great for them, but because it's too perfect. Nope. And they freak out, run away. Mm. Or, mm. you know, mm. I'm, I'm, I'm with somebody, they get close to me and then I go, <gasps> that's dangerous and bye. Or you ever make somebody into the, the bad guy. And then, so you do something fucked up so that they break up with you. <laughs> Had it happen to me. Yeah. Um, what the fuck? See, so there's, there's what works. There's like, and, and, and then there's more. There's all the shit that gets in the way of, as if the principles, this is how I'm seeing it. Like, like when mm. I train boxing and I'm not saying boxing is like an intimate partnership, I do the principles, but then there's this, then there's me that gets in the way, my greed, my fears, my desires, my needs, my, 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 me, me, me stuff that I have to give up in order to be with that principle. And then and in an essence, like the principle kicks my ass because I don't get to be me. I have to serve the principle and then it works. You now, do get to be you. You get to be you as that principle. Right. I don't Which get is to different be than me as that principle. Yeah. But it's so you do get to be you. Yeah, but you have yeah. to sacrifice your your Needs your and uh fears and greed and blah and all this other crap. Your exclusive like yeah. cutting off from everything else, tiny sure. little world. Individuality. Now I'm not saying I can hear this going sideways. Oh, then, I, then it'd be in a good relationship. I need to sacrifice my individuality. No, I'm trying to reveal something about how principles work and how they kick ass. What would happen if we dropped the word relationship? Uh, we drop it. What do you mean? Why? Uh, what would the consequences be? Because I think when you, people think of a relationship, they, they think of this have they have this thing vision. that's got a bunch of stuff attached to it right and, and they think of it as a thing that exists which in reality in relationship doesn't exist you just make it up but yeah it and have any substance so two human beings exist two two emotional psycho uh i mean psycho like literally like they've got Psychotic. psyches 
He means no. Sidewalk. They answer, maybe sometimes. <laughs> no, no, like two. Okay, I so know two what bodies. You're I just you know what I mean? Funny, dude. Two yeah. sensitive, conscious organisms exist that are emotionally driven and have a whole bunch of unconscious needs and fears. They're and they're they're abstract thinkers. These ones, yeah. they're clever monkeys, and they're yeah. sensitive. And they can see into the future. They can think about it. They, they can, can project. They can future. abstract. They can do all the shit. Yeah. But it. But but they're still physical bodies. And then you create agreements, and you pay attention to each other, and you honor those agreements, or you don't. Yep. Integrity. Yeah. Works. And and those integrity those agreements are going to be driven by your emotions, your needs, your desires. You know, it's a deal. Or, it's or like a, those agreements can also be found. I, I, I hold space that the agreements can be founded on a principle too, which then is as if transcendent of the greed or the fears. What's an example? Like honesty could be chosen. And honesty mm. does not kowtow to greed or fear mm. or anger or love or whatever. It's just honest. And so it as if is outside of the bounds of the the drives that I have. So that's what mm. that's why I think is one of the main powers of principles is like they're real, they exist, and they don't care about me. Mm. And so then I can touch something that is that is as if greater than me. Mm. And certain results then manifest as a result of me putting myself through the rigor of being honest. See, I watch, I watch what happens here at Contemplation Intensives when people are brutally honest all week long. It has an effect, a big one. Mm. Mm. Come to a Contemplation Intensive, by the way. They're very intense. Check the links. Yeah. Yeah. So, so well, then, uh, oh, go ahead. Well, I, I guess just so much of the it's complicated man it's complicated. Yep. <laughs> it's fucking complicated. So, so so what we've discovered about intimate partnerships is it's complicated it's complicated and, and i wanted to bring it i think i wanted to bring it back and then close out here is is that yeah we've discussed a lot of things now from my perspective don't take any of this stuff as like, this is the right way to do an intimate partnership. This is how you should do an intimate partnership. This is, but no, I don't care what you do. Um, if anything, I think you could use our dialogue as a way to provoke considerations about these matters and consider for yourself, like, what do you want? What do you want to create? What do you think is healthy and empowering and loving? What works for you in an intimate partnership? Be clear about that. And if you want it, go get it. If you don't, don't. And then recognize and appreciate all of the confusion and the shit that's going to happen and the good things and the bad things. And can, can, yeah. can you think of one example of a relationship that would suffer from one or both people being more present, being more appreciative, and having more integrity? No. I can't think of uh, how that would possibly be. Yeah, so that's an interesting question. So yeah, maybe you, you all out there in the world, you could consider, you know, are there things that in an intimate partnership, if you do more of them, there's no way that it sets you back? And I don't know what would be a good way to phrase that question, but like, what's the stuff that makes it loving no matter what? Because love does not mean you feel good necessarily. Like you're just loving. Loving could take the form of flipping tables and screaming at people to get the fuck out of your temple or whatever. It's like, see, yeah, but he wasn't being loving towards the people he was screaming at. 
He was being it loving towards the people who were going in there well, and getting taken advantage whole... of. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm going to support these other people. <laughs> so I'm just saying, like, there's these different. That, that was a good, good question there, I think. And consider that for yourselves. Be the. And it's complex. <laughs> <laughs> And argue amongst yourselves in the comments. So lots of comments. Sweet. So anyway, awesome. Thank you. Good. Thank you. It's another episode. Catch you later. Come do workshops. You can hire me to do a workshop. I do one on communication relationship. We do not tell people how to have intimate partnerships, but we just we deep dive into what communication is, what relationship is. You can do that. I've got a forum. Just check the links. You know what to do. All right. We good? We good? Come here. Do workshop. Did I miss anything? Nope. Come join my cult. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you see how many people there are? Hey, Freddie. Okay. You guys can come out now. Yep. Yep. We're about to wrap up. <laughs> All right. Cool. Thanks. Much love. Take care. Catch you guys later. Thank you. Yes. All right.